It is time. Time to double the memory of my Maxi Gamer 3D. I know, there are already 3 videos on my channel related to upgrading the memory of this specific 3DFX Voodoo card. When I designed the memory board and released the first video upgrading this Voodoo card from 4 to 6 MB, I was surprised how well this mod was received. In a follow up video, I created a second memory board to complete the upgrade to a total of 8 MB. This project was anything but easy. I quickly realized that memory sockets flipped on their head do not make proper contact with SOJ40 memory chips. Furthermore, the location of the chips soldered to the Voodoo card is not perfect. Small variations in the position of the existing chips cause the memory board not to clip over the existing modules properly. But after grinding down plastic support and forcefully bending sockets to adjust for measurement inaccuracies, I finally ended up with a 3DFX Voodoo card having 4 MB of texture and 4 MB of frame buffer memory. There were so many other tiny problems which became part of a refinement process that eventually led to an upgraded PCB revision 1.1. In today's video, I will create two memory boards for this MaxiGamer 3D, which will become a permanent addition to my collection of 3DFX cards. Both memory boards we will create today feature the PCB in revision 1.1, which has been manufactured by PCBWay, one of the leading PCB manufacturers in China. Without their support and encouragement, I would not have been able to bring you the Voodoo Memory Upgrade Board or the 30 pin SIM module that is able to force EDO memory chips to operate in FPM mode. All my projects are available on PCBWay's shared project space where you can order your batch in your preferred color today. You should also check out PCBWay.com if you require 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication or CNC machining services. And if you sign up as a new customer using the link in the video description, you will get 5 US dollars off your first order. Check out PCBWay.com and turn your ideas into reality. I have quite a few Voodoo cards which allows me to put together a set with 4, 6 and 8 MB, ready to be used in future tests. I don't think there is a measurable performance difference among the 4 MB models provided they are clocked at the same frequency. It would be unfair to pick one card that will be the dedicated 4 MB sample, therefore I will probably rotate the 4 MB cards in upcoming videos. The 6 MB card practically chose itself. At the moment, this Innovision Mighty FX6M is equipped with 4 MB, but it has pads capable of accommodating 4 additional memory chips, enabling it to be upgraded to 6 MB. To maintain flexibility, I am considering adding sockets, allowing me to use it in either a 4 MB or a 6 MB configuration as needed. The Maxi Gamer 3D is the one I picked for the 8 MB mod, mainly because the red PCBs of the memory boards match the color scheme and because I have done the mod on this card once before. Nevertheless, it is worth mentioning that the memory boards are compatible with other cards that have a similar layout as the Maxi Gamer 3D. First of course, you need to get a batch of the PCBs in a color matching your Voodoo board and all the components required. Then we can start assembling the boards with sockets, jumpers, resistors and the memory chips. There is however a slight change due to the memory sockets I am using today. Before we start assembling the boards, it is necessary to alter the plastic sockets. This support structure prevents the sockets to clip over the existing memory chips. By removing it, we create sufficient space to attach the memory expansion board to the Voodoo card. Which was true for the sockets I have used in my previous videos but not with the batch of sockets I am using today. Removing the tiny bridges was enough in my previous mods. However, the sockets I am using today have a slightly lower profile and require further modification. These sockets do not have enough space to accommodate the housing of the memory chips. There is a small gap between the PCB and the sockets, which is enough to compromise the correct operation of the mod. The only thing I can do now is to cut the remaining plastic inside the socket, leaving us with just the surrounding frame. Fortunately, this batch seems to be more robust and the housing doesn't bend as much when a chip is inserted. The only trade off we need to be aware of is that we will lose a significant area where we could have applied silicon glue to secure the sockets during the assembly process. What is remaining are just the small edges of the socket where the glue can be applied. After applying the glue, we can place the PCB over the sockets. Revision 1.1 of the PCB has small holes at the corner pads for each memory chip. Once the PCB is placed over the sockets, we need to make sure that the corner pins of each socket are visible through the holes. 
This may take a bit of time, but it should be possible to see all 16 pins through the holes. The drying time of the silicon is about 24 hours, during which we should not touch the PCBs. I also placed a small weight on the PCBs to make sure that they are pressed against the socket pins. While placing the weights, it is important not to disturb the position of the boards. Half a pound or 250 grams should be enough to press the boards against the sockets. We can start soldering the pins through the holes the day after. A small amount of flux and solder should be enough to attach the pins on the other side to their corresponding pads. All this work is required to keep the sockets underneath in position. As you can see, I keep both boards clipped to the voodoo card throughout the entire process. This ensures that we will end up with two boards that will perfectly fit over the memory chips of this card. After soldering the 16 pins, we can carefully remove the boards. If you rip them off with a lot of force, you may end up pulling pins out of the socket. So it's better to be careful. I used a plastic tool to get between the PCB and the socket frame, which makes this process a lot easier. With both boards removed, we can solder the remaining pins of the sockets. Just make sure you remember which board goes to which set of memory chips. With an open socket like this and no plastic in the way, soldering becomes a very enjoyable task. Once we're done on this side, we can solder the memory chips to the upper side of the memory board. I tested those memory chips using the Diamond Monster 3D, which I recently fixed and equipped with memory sockets. There are probably better ways of testing memory chips, but I haven't had the time to look at those yet. I just want to make sure that the memory chips I solder to those boards work. Finally, we can go ahead and install the through-hole resistors with 47 ohms each, and the jumper headers, which I will use to connect to the 3DFX chips and configure the boards. The instructions how to use this board is printed on the PCB, so there is no need to look up anything. Here are the two resistors labeled 47 ohms each, the jumper for configuring the board and the description on the other side, as well as which connector pad or pin connects to which pin on the 3DFX chips. There is one wire that needs to connect from pin 130 of the texture mapping unit, or TMU chip, to our upper memory board. The wire can be connected to either one of the two connection pins. When we close the jumper, the signal is bridged across both pins. For the frame buffer interface, or FBI chip, we require two wires. One connects from pin 180 to connect a pin labeled FBI 180. And the other wire connects from pin 199 of the FBI chip to the connector pin labeled FBI 199. Before I start soldering tiny wires to the legs of the 3DFX chips, I prepare the surrounding area with some Captain tape. The wires I am soldering to the 3DFX chips are very thin and they need to be protected. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I would like to have this card as a permanent 8MB Voodoo card in my collection. Therefore, I want to make sure to secure the wires properly. With patience and a thin soldering tip, and flux of course, I'm carefully attaching the wires. This process is really identical to what I have done in the other videos. Once all three wires are attached to the chips, I add another layer of captain tape, which secures the wires in place and provides protection from accidentally being ripped off the card. Although this is supposed to be a permanent solution, I still added connectors to the end of the thicker wires that eventually connect to the 3DFX chips. I may want to borrow those memory boards for other cards in the future provided their memory layout is similar and compatible. And finally, we are done. The card is finally upgraded to 8MB. I'm absolutely happy with the outcome. The memory boards fit perfectly over the existing memory chips. No gaps and no issues with slightly misaligned sockets. Great! Let's see if the card works. The first thing I will try is Mojo under DOS. That should provide a dead giveaway if something is still not working properly. But as you can see, we get the output we expect. 4MB on the TMU and 4MB on the FBI chip. All good. We can go ahead and test the card under Windows. 3D Mark 99, specifically the race benchmark, was the only application where I could really see a difference in performance and the benefit of doubling the memory of the Voodoo card so far. In the original Tomb Raider on the DOS, the performance remained identical when comparing 4, 6 and 8 MB Voodoo cards. This Voodoo card performs identical to the other Maxi Gamer 3D I have tested with an 8 MB upgrade before. 
And while the additional texture memory may contribute to an enhanced performance, the doubled frame buffer memory opens up the opportunity to increase the rendering resolution of the Voodoo to 800 by 600. This was possible in Quake, which I have already tested with an 8MB Voodoo card. The race benchmark also completes at a resolution of 800 by 600, with a much lower score of 11.2 frames per second. In the end it is questionable if a memory upgrade makes sense on the original Voodoo card. However, it is still nice to have one and I hope I can put it to good use for interesting content in the future. The next game I want to look at is the original Unreal and see if the extra memory makes a difference. There are videos on YouTube comparing Voodoo cards with different memory sizes in Unreal. However, from the initial tests I have done, I may come to a different conclusion. And this is all I have for today. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my future content. And finally, a sincere thank you to all my incredible Patreons for your invaluable support. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.